Boys and girls, how you doing? I'm fine. Are you? <laughs> you couldn't prove it by us. <laughs> how Welcome are to you? Cooking I'm, I'm real good. Good. I'm real good. I'm Laban. He's Larry. <laughs> I got lots of letters to read. I'm real mm -hmm. concerned about them. Don't you want to ask me anything, Bly? No, not really. Why? You sure. Am I supposed to ask you something? <laughs> <laughs> what do you? What do you? Know? You don't want to ask me why I have a black eye? Oh, I, I didn't even notice you had a black eye. Why do you have a black I eye? I wouldn't tell everybody this. Only, only my best friend in the whole world will I, will I tell. Would I? Would I? <laughs> what? What? Well, yesterday morning. This, I didn't even this, notice this, you this, had a black eye. <laughs> he does have a black eye. I can't get over this. This is the category of truth is stranger than fiction. <laughs> yesterday morning, I got up, as is my want to do, on the Sabbath and read the paper. <laughs> had a nice breakfast, being rendered a little bit sleepy, mm. especially after watching one of the religious shows on TV, <laughs> I took a little nap. <laughs> then I remembered that I had to go to a meeting, but I couldn't remember what time it started, whether it was at one or two. So while I was comfortably you ensconced in my bed. You got I mad was, at yourself and punched no, yourself no, out. No, no, it's better oh, than that. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm in the bed. And I reach over, you know, in my bedroom, there's, I have the table with the TV and the phone, the little princess phone right there. So I reach over and get it out, and I call my friend Doug Patterson. You know Doug, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, because he had to go to the meeting, and he knew what time it was. So I called him up, and I, you know, with the little princess phone, you know, the black one, I mm. go, ding, 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 and I go, <laughs> 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 and hit myself in the eye with my princess phone. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, so, ladies and gentlemen, from the Dumber Than Fiction <laughs> department. So when, I've heard some pretty silly <laughs> stories in my time. So those. when I, <laughs> Doug had to know, I was laughing and crying at the same time. And he you said, you really wrong? did it real well. And I said, you would not believe what I've just done. <laughs> Can, can you get a tight shot of his shiner? I mean, that really isn't. Now, you got to shut it to see it real well. It, it really is pretty incredible. See, when I go like that, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have hurt myself any number of ways, as we all know. You've, all, you've lived through bypass well, here, surgery. If you put this over it, it'll be all right. <laughs> and, you know, a broken wrist and all sorts of other injuries. Did you put but, anything up, like a steak on it? I didn't it? have a He's steak. Too cheap all I had with all I had was some of this chopped lamb that I've got to work <laughs> with today. And somehow I didn't want to put it on my yeah. eye. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a letter here. <laughs> Sir, please send me your recipe. They look very good. Are you all still sending out the other recipe you all had before you started this program? Uh, I think so. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Well, this one is from Mary Talent in Chatham, Virginia. I tried the beef cooked in the beer recipe from one of the above uh, shows, but I substituted venison for steak. It was great. Somehow I lost the recipe. Too much of the liquid in the sauce, perhaps. <laughs> They're, they're signifying to us <laughs> that they want to show the lovely centre oh. piece uh, on our table. Oh, Did yeah. Doris work this up? Uh -huh. Did the lovely Doris work yes. that up? Just because we're trying to do lamb recipes today. <laughs> this is the actual Mary who had a little lamb, in and case you've that, always wanted that to. That is a ceramic replica of the lamb that we are indeed frying up on the show today. And as you, <laughs> as you can see, her fleas are white as snow. <laughs> and everywhere that Mary goes, okay, dear Dor Doris, wait a minute. Whoa, wait, this is... Doris is getting fan mail now here. <laughs> now we're having to read Doris letters. Dear Doris, would you please send me recipe so and so and so and so. It says, you seem to be looking after the boys. Please just one thing before they start cooking. Put a damp hand towel on the counter for them to use. <laughs> Thought I said something else. Didn't you? This would help them damp. so much damp. and something to wipe their hands on when they need it. Sincerely, Kathleen Wright of Roanoke, Virginia. Thank you very much. <laughs> damp towel. I'm gonna have one. And of those. this is from Marlon Rogers. 
Well, that's easy for you to say. Well, I know, and it's literally impossible to read the Any signature on here. But she says, I'm glad that you all are receiving more cooking utensils. You all are such characters. I can't wait every weekend and during the week to catch your show. Well, bye for now and continued success. So it's real sweet whomever you are. Larry, I think we better go cook because these are these recipes are take a long time. Uh-huh. And some, we, you remember last week we had so much fun getting through that uh <laughs> show something's that boiling along here right friskily on top of this stove i hope oh, it's supposed to be oh that we can turn it off yeah. okay turn it off turn it off all right i'm uh, going i have a long story to tell it seems like this story <laughs> this uh, show has already started out on a strange kind of uh, circuitous route as it were i'm doing uh, baked lamb western style using six lamb breast spare ribs that aren't lamb at all. And actually, this is pork. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with the recipe you whatsoever. You couldn't get any breasties off a of lamb? Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> There's a big breast shortage with the lamb population <laughs> going on. Now, I'm going to tell you the whole story. <laughs> this show is already off to a bad start. Every uh, major super chain in town and a few individual uh, oh. butchers told me no, 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 you can't get those here. Now, I'm talking about the, uh, the breast or spare ribs. Right now at this time of the year. Well, they're hard to get just about any time of the year. And their reason for that is they don't sell an all, awful lot of them in this portion of the world where we do this show. Now, they probably do somewhere else, so we don't get the lamb yeah. people all upset and you know, lamb right, chops, right, right. chops, chops. So anyway, but we can't get them here. And the ones that do get them, take them and tear the meat out from between the ribs and grind them up into the, you've always heard this term, <laughs> lamb patties. <laughs> well, that's where lamb patties come from. So consequently, uh, I could not get any. So what I've done is I've substituted uh, pork ribs, and that's what I'm going to be working with. And what I'm going to do is take this lovely, lovely pork rib, and I'm going to cut it several different places so we can get it into edible little blocks, you see, and salt and pepper it in uh, a nice little baking dish, and then and, and I'll tell you all about the rest of it in a couple of minutes. Laban's got a long recipe, and now to him. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I, I do have, indeed, a long recipe, and for this you need boneless lamb cut up in chunks, about two pounds. I would advise you to use the lamb shoulder, which is very inexpensive, and not the leg, which is delicious, but very expensive. Hmm. So. Now, I have tried to go through this lamb that I have here and cut as much fat off of it as I could in the time allotted for me to do this. If I had even more time, I'd cut even more of it off. But this is defatted it, and you want to put it down in a mixture of one tablespoon of margarine and one of olive oil in a big, heavy pot. And we're going to let this lamb brown real good. It's going to get real brown. And believe me, it's going to take 10 or 15 minutes to get to the stage we want it on fairly high heat. You could do it slower with medium heat, but we're going to be right here watching it. But it's got to be really brown. You can't shortcut this. So we will just put it in this big iron pot and let it start to brown. And as you do that, you will see that an awful lot of juice will come out of it and that needs to cook away too. With a princess phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think I'm going to get over it. <laughs> a princess phone. Well, you know it is Look, funny. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to take these ribs right now, oh. and I'm just going to cut them between the bones and cut them into little hunks which would be much more delicate to get hold of to rip apart and eat in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do that a couple of times. Well, good. All right. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's all. Now, I've got some cloves of garlic here. I've got, you need two or three, and these are small, so I'm going to use three. And I peeled them by giving them the old bouncing knife trick and makes it easy to get the skins off of them. And this needs to be minced, so um, we got to pull these off. So you're going to need a couple of some garlic, and I love garlic, so 
uh, I'm going to use, like I say, a little bit more than we would normally call for in this recipe just because we love it. They have installed a new uh, I, hand towel Harold thing did down that. here. Can you believe did you it? do that, Harold? That's wonderful. We have such a great crew around here. We really do. Now, the only thing I'm going to do right now is salt and pepper these. And at home, I used cracked pepper, freshly ground, but here I don't have it today. I'm just going to take this in here, and we're going to salt and pepper it just a little bit, and then we're going to put it in the oven, and we're going to bake it for an hour at 325 degrees, Woo. and then we're going to drain it off, and then I'll show you in a little bit what else we're going to do with a little bit of salt and some pepper to your liking on top of it, like so. I love pepper. Don't think you can get too much of it. Put it in the oven and just bake it wide out in the open, just like that for an hour, 325 degrees. And then we'll have chapter two momentarily. Well, now I've got my garlic minced and I've got it in this little plastic bowl. Now I've got to have a tablespoon of chopped onion and uh, a tablespoon, I've got to have a cup of chopped onion. So you start out with one medium to large onion and we're gonna chop it up. Now, while you're doing all of this, you need, if you've got uh, help in your kitchen, you also want to do some rice. And you want to have, oh, four or five servings of rice done up. And our good and trusty friend Doris has started the rice for it. We're so proud of her handling or difficult assignment like rice. Lice? Did you say she has lice? No. Oh, rice. Oh, rice. oh okay. And uh, these onions don't have to be minced or anything. They can be in fairly large pieces. And we want to have them in a bowl. We don't want to add them to our meat yet. Let's see how that's doing. Oh, good. Boy, that stuff is really. And you don't want it to be white. I mean, we got to get the pink out of it, but you want it actually to be brown. It smells wonderful. Oh, come on. Why don't, why don't you tell them about the time you were a little boy, Larry, and how much you enjoyed working with the sheep on the farm? <laughs> I, I think that maybe that story <laughs> saved for another time. I was just talking about the fact that I think that sheep are relatively dirty animals kept live and open in the fields on the farm. No offense, anybody. Well, so. you know, we have a personal friend that is a sheep uh, Miss Elizabeth, and I think we ought to oh, show yeah. everybody just... Uh, this is the only good sheep I've ever known, right. <laughs> and we're going to show just you this sheep a real here good, in just a good second. Person. One of our famous adventures out into the field. Now, and there we are. There we are. We look just real innocent. Oh, look, and there's the very lovely, there. what's her name? Elizabeth. Uh-oh, poor Elizabeth. I believe that we have some some plans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brutus the Barber what here. What do you Pretty suppose <laughs> is going on? Well, she, she doesn't, uh, she seems oblivious. She doesn't really seem to like look like she knows what's going on, but then neither does Laban. Now, here we go, here we go, here we go. Now there's just no telling what's going on behind that shed down there. With poor Elizabeth, oh, hey, oh, oh it's no, terrible. Oh. There's a jiggling of the picture. Oh, it would appear as though the ground has- I know something terrible is going on. Something. You've done it again, Bly, oh. and been caught. <laughs> yeah, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's where they come from. <laughs> <laughs> if you've always wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it here. Yeah, and we do want everybody to know that that was only the the uh, fur of Elizabeth. It was not Elizabeth herself. herself. Elizabeth right. is still very happy on the farm. A little chilly, perhaps. <laughs> eating but her way to glory. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> is not included in anything here today. I'm happy to say. Uh, <laughs> well, now, Bly, while we're at it, let me keep going over here. This is the longest recipe in the history of the world. It's just got so much in it. You have to have two good ripe tomatoes, and they're going to have to be chopped and seeded, and I'm taking the nasty parts out of this. These are Mexican tomatoes. We didn't have any locally produced ones at this time of the year when this is being done. And I'm just going to chop these babies right up here on our counter. And incidentally, you will notice that if you've got a real good sharp knife, you can cut the tomato without any big hoo-ha, without any big problems. But if you don't have a sharp knife, a hoo-ha is probably right. not going to be what you'll have. Now, it would be real nice, yes it would, boys and girls, if 
where you were, you had enough time to seal, to seal, to <laughs> peel and see peel these and seal. maters. But it's not absolutely necessary. You will not die mm -hmm. from e eating tomato skins. Now let's now we skin off my tomato. Oh, mm -hmm. oh boy, time is just going along briskly oh, here know. today. I'm telling I'm you, hurrying, Mr. I'm Johnson, hurrying. I know. I don't want to bother. Well, you. how are you doing over there? With oh, all right. You also got to toast mm. some almonds, and I've got the almonds toast. Almonds toasting. Now, see, there's a lot of broth down in here. If you can see down in this pan, a lot of broth. A lot of broth, and we want to get rid of it. We want to get shed of it, as Larry is so famous for saying. So we've got that just going fiery hot, and we're going to have a lot of spices that are going in this. Let me show you what: hot sauce, Tabasco. We got parsley, and I'm using dried flakes. We got cinnamon. We've got uh, ginger, we've got cumin, and weren't you the one that said you couldn't find cumin? And you know, I had a whole jar of it in my uh, cupboard. Well, I've seen out. that spice cupboard of yours. You got stuff in There's there. There's stuff in there. And whole cloves and turmeric. All of that is gonna go in here. So this is a real spicy dish. And the meat is going to, and it's beginning to brown, as you can see. And the faster this, uh, the water cooks out of that meat, uh, the better it will be. And I will continue to chop up my fresh tomatoes over here. I will say that after you've got all of these ingredients in your pan, you just let it cook for about an hour and a half and the lamb gets fork tender and it will thicken up a great deal. And I, you'll see I've, of course, got some that uh, I cooked yesterday. While you're chopping that, can I just do one sure, little thing go here? Ahead. Okay. What we're going to do in anticipation of our ribs coming out one hour is we're going to mix up a little something to go on top of it. And it's very, very nice. Now, what it calls for is a can of crushed pineapple, which that is there. And into that, we're going to put a quarter of a cup of honey. This is some of my good friend Jan Wilkins's honey, and you know I've got oh. to go back to him again and see and if I can get some, get some more. more. I've just about gone through well, it. You know he's got it. Uh, also, so we need uh, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, boink, and a quarter of a teaspoon of allspice. Looks almost like the half a teaspoon did, didn't it? Well, use your imagination. We need uh, a teaspoon of salt goes into that. This is an interesting mix. Mm. And that's all. That's all that goes in there. And now what you do is you mix that all up. Like so. And then you get it all over you. Like I just did another completely <laughs> oh, clean no. shirt. This show cost me a fortune. And it's because I'm wearing the thing down uh -huh. here. And I don't need it down. I need it up here. That's why they put you know, bibs on aprons yeah. so that you don't mess up your fine garment. Now, what you do is you take out, after an hour, you take your ribs out and just pretend like these just came out and aren't all greasy, but they really are because they didn't just do come out, but pretend like, like woman? just take this <laughs> and you put this on top of it. And in a couple of minutes, I'm going to do the final thing that goes on top of it. This is a nice citrus base, citrus mix. And this is uh, this makes enough of this, by the way, for a lot more than you see here, okay? I've got it in a, a shallow pan, which we can drain quite easily. Now, that's all I'm gonna use of that. Next thing I'm gonna do, I have, I want you all to know this is what Florida oranges look like when they really come off the trees in Florida before those kissed people get hold of them and kiss them all up with good colors and everything. They look a little gnarly, don't they? And what I'm going to do right now is I got one of these fancy schmancy. Johnson's famous for these things. Well, I, I got one free in Cracker Jacks or something. I don't know what it was. So anyway, I am going to peel this orange and just lift that peel right off there. Be careful you don't separate it because we're going we're gonna to do slices here in a minute. And what we'll do is we'll slice that and put it on top of what you just saw there a minute ago, and we'll put it back in the oven for another 45 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes actually, uh, until the things are tender and this has had a chance to bake. So anyway, you can take that off. It's going real good and I hit a gnarly place. What in the world? Well, the Lord, uh, there's a 
orange has got a tumor. It's got a bad tumor. <laughs> <laughs> and just slice it this way, all right? So you got nice little slices. And what you'll do is you will place those on top. Very lovely presentation, lovely. And you may want to throw a couple of seeds out lest somebody gag on them and die. But it don't matter to me one way or the other, I'm leaving them in. And that's it, put it back in there and finish baking it and I'll show you what it looks like when it all comes out back. Mr. Johnson has a lot to all right, do. thank you. All right, now the lamb is getting really nice and brown in here and I'm going to add my cup of onion and my garlic that has been minced. And this only needs to cook until the onion begins to look transparent. So we'll get that in there and it just takes a minute or two for that onion to take up some of the flavor of the meat and look real good. Ooh, this just smells better and better. Now I'm gonna to start to add other things. Uh, the first thing will be the tomatoes and I'm gonna put those right on down in here now. Ooh. Whoops. Whoops, there went another one. Mm. I just had a friend, Steve Cawthorn, just got back from Florida and brought me these fresh right off the tree. Thank you, Steve. Oh, well, how nice. Very now, good, all right. lovely friend of mine. Now, here's 16 ounces of tomato sauce. Mm. That goes down in there, and you want to stir it all up. And that's just bubbling away. And now we want to, uh, all right, we'll go with the... Uh, couple of tablespoons of parsley flakes. And of course it would be better <laughs> if we could uh, spit at me. Uh, have fresh. It did spit it at did. me. All right, yeah. now cinnamon. Yeah, we we're gonna show the recipes momentarily, yes. but we, we gotta right. give them a chance to get all, right. all the stuff all in right. there. We got half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And this is really tasty when it goes in the <laughs> All right, it is. half a teaspoon of cinnamon. All right, uh, ginger, you get a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger. There it is. She used to dance with A fruit. quarter of a teaspoon of cumin seed that had been ground up. I'm gonna uh, take these out of the oven while you're doing that. Whole cloves. Couple of those. Uh, three dashes of Tabasco, boing, 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 boing. All right, some salt, which uh, I'll put in in a minute because I don't have it here, and the turmeric. There's your salt. Thank you. And there you go with about a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, which will give it a golden cast and make it real tasty. And all of that, and we need a, about a teaspoon of salt. Now there it is. Now when it has cooked you cover it up at this point, stir it up real good, and cover it up and let it cook for an hour and a half. Now, very quickly, here's the assembled dish. The rice goes, goes in, oh, <laughs> goes in the middle. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. And uh, let me have this. Uh, I just can't move. That goes in the middle. Ow. Recipes. Oh, they're coming up. Put them up there. There's the uh, lamb stew. All right. Larry, would you read that for me? Yeah, two pounds of boses of lamb, one inch cubes, one <laughs> tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of margarine, a cup of chopped onion, two cloves, garlic minced, a large tomatoes chopped, 16 ounce uh, canned tomato sauce, and two tablespoons of parsley, half teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of cumin, two whole cloves, three dashes Tabasco, a teaspoon of salt, dash of turmeric, 16 ounce can of pearl onions drained. And four to six cups of cooked rice to put it on, third cup of toasted almonds put over top of that, and a third cup of golden raisins. Mine, you get uh, six pounds of lamb breast or spare ribs of any kind, salt and pepper, a can of crushed pineapple, a quarter cup of honey, a teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of cinnamon. And of course you have the quarter teaspoon of allspice, two medium oranges peeled and sliced. And when you put it all together, you have this, and it's all sitting down here real nice. Right. And here, and have pretty, this, it's quite lovely. So Enjoy that, it's oh, real boy, good. I know it is, good. I just know it's just wonderful. Ah! And I'm gonna try it too. <laughs>
I'm going to try this. Oh, me. Mm. I'll tell you, we need to have This is a good long. lamb recipe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good lamb recipe. But I can't get these apart and to eat the them. ribs. I think they're good. Mm. Oh, they're he delicious. says, mm. bye. Good. So long. See you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs>